She lives in Jamaica, New York, is on the faculty at Vermont College of Fine Arts and the Writing for Children and Young Adults program, and has two adult daughters, Stephanie and Michelle, and a son-in-law, Adam. She is described by her editor as the most lovable person on earth. So, um, my big dilemma of the day was read, talk, read, talk, read, talk. Um, I'll do a little bit of both. Um, okay, so, um, um, so uh, well, first of all, I'm sure you all are feeling a little full um, after all. Uh, um, is it on? Is it on? Yeah, it's on. It's on. Um, after all the discussions, the panels, uh, that fulfilling leads to exhaustion, and yet we're still energized by all of these ideas that have been put forth before us. So many thanks to all the moderate, uh, the moderators, and the panelists for those very thought-provoking and funny um, and inspiring um, exchanges. So, now, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when Jenny Brown invited me to come and to, and to celebrate the culmination of the, uh, the saga of the Gaither sisters um, in, in the trilogy uh, that, that was launched by One Crazy Summer, I jumped at the chance. Um, I grew up always wanting to talk about my stories, my stories, my stories, um, but being surrounded by family members who were glued to the television set. So um, just to have this kind of captive audience that was, this is just, you know, this is like, uh, this is Christmas. Um, so, um, okay, now, but, but first, <laughs> the symbol um, for the artist formerly known as. Um, as a nod to our second panel, which was artist and mentor, I am going to refer to my um, myself and, and my approach to my work in terms of the artist. Not that I am becoming royal or anything, but it's that I want to kind of remind you all that even something that's very much that has the feel of realism, that uses fact, um, that the characters might seem real. All of that has to be made up. Um, so, um, so uh, now I should not, I'm, um, I don't want to presume that you all know or have read all the stories. So I'm just going to overview all three very quickly. Um, uh, One Crazy Summer. Um, I feel like a jazz singer. Um, one, in One Crazy Summer, the, uh, the, the Gaither sisters, Delphine, Bennett, and Fern, travel from Brooklyn to Oakland to reunite with the mother who abandoned them when they were younger. Um, she is unrepentant. She is involved with the Black Panthers. And she, as soon as they come in, she sends them out. Um, she gets rid of them. She sends them to the Black, um, to the Black Panthers ran uh, People's, um, uh, People's Center for breakfast and for re-education, but mainly to get them out of her hair. Um, in PSB 11, uh, we follow the sisters back to Brooklyn, and um, the theme, the overwhelming theme, is changes. We see how they cope with changes in their home environment, um, changes in their community, and changes. Well, they feel the change of the nation, but they don't 
quite articulate that. Um, but the most important change are the changes within the self, as we talked about a little in the um, in the second, uh, I'm sorry, in the third panel, which was um, uh, young young women driving plot, um, and 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 all those changes that that we feel, and kind of incorporating that into um, into the literature. In the last and final story of the Gaithers, um, I guess the, the, the Charles Trotters and Gaithers, um, the sisters travel down south where the family, where the notion of family, identity, and um, who is family and the state of family are all um, examined and tested. So now, in our opening panel, Leonard Marcus asked the panel to comment, um, the uh, teacher as writers, to ask the, uh, ask the panel to comment on um, the interactive aspect of their writing. And I thought about this, which brought me back to it, the planning and envisioning of One Crazy Summer. Um, I grew up during this period, and I followed the Black Panthers with great interest as a teen. I always knew I would write about them. Um, I followed. I, um, I, I followed with great interest, and I wanted to bring that movement into the classroom for primary grades. But as far as I knew, it had not been done, which meant I had to push past those those boundaries, those narrative boundaries, and and just go for it. So anyway. The research was tremendous between autobiographies, film, um, interviews, speeches, photographs, and so forth. There was so much. And when you get involved with the research, the more you know, the more you feel it is also vital and it has to go in. Um, um, but um, as Adam had, um, had stated in the first uh, panel, that sometimes all of that gets into the way of imagination. And so I found myself at times at odd between the research and wanting to inform and instruct. Um, and my daydreaming, envisioning self, um, the place where characters grow and where story begins to take shape shape. Um, and so, you know, that was my initial struggle. And eventually I had to trust the artist to come in and to and to place that uh, that priority over the storytelling. Um, and, and I also kind of said to myself, you know, one day, read it. there will be a book that will bring the reader inside the movement, and you will get to go out into the world and talk to people, talk to, uh, talk to uh, students in primary grades, uh, middle school, high schools, graduate level, and so forth and so on. And then all that research, you can just bring that along with you. Um, now, uh, notice as I as I tell this class all about the stuff that I have unearthed, how wrapped in an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I had I actually creatively I had bigger fish to fry. Um, and I, you know it was basically well how do you tell this story um, uh, to an audience of fourth, fifth, sixth graders, um, when the prevailing image of the Black Panther movement is that of black machismo. Well, I didn't want to revise history. My goal was to include it into the discussion, to bring it into the classroom when we talk about American history, when we talk about African American history. So the artists acknowledged the um, uh, black machismo, the presence, um, it, it let it loom large and dangerously in the background. Um, and so for me, um, the, you know, that was very easy to put that aside and to have that kind of tension um, hovering over, but distance 
For me, the challenge was uh, resisting the aspect of the, of the movement that really held the most appeal to me, and that was the involvement of the women of the movement. Um, uh, one, um, one such uh, leader, um, Afeni Shakur, um, came to our house for, um, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Chris, um, not my house, my Aunt Edie's home for a family celebration. So, um, so I was very much tied into all of these, these women uh, reading their stories, following especially uh, the drama of Asada Shakur as a teenager um, and hoping that she uh, got justice uh, because I was naive and hoping that she would get away. Um, so, Yes, I wanted to put these women into the story, but alas, um, this is not what the story is about. So instead, the artist came in and just said, you know, create the story about the people, the people, the rank and file people who make the movement, who are served by the movement, and who who feed the people, who educate. Um, uh, Erica Huggins um, was uh, was actually kind of a um, kind of an art. Um, an architect of the education um, of the, like the black uh, the Black Panther schools of which I based my community center on, um, and and so forth. You know, let those people come to the forefront and put the and put the leaders aside. Um, instead, my goal was to was to keep my eye on the prize, which was the children, the children of the movement, the children and the child narrator who is Delphine. From there, the real business of sloughing away, lopping off and pruning away began to take, uh, began to allow the manuscript and the story uh, to take uh, to take shape. Um, and I said to myself, if, if it didn't serve the curiosity, the concerns, the wants, and the setbacks of the character of Delphine, then it was better left out. The artist learned that restraint is akin to mastery. In writing one crazy summer, I'm, in, I'm sorry, in writing PSB 11, um, I began to think, you know, what distinguishes this story from the previous? Well, we're still, when we're still in the same times. Well, I think what was going to distinguish that would be my focus. So, um, so uh, if, if you get, if you get a copy of PSB 11 from me, it will probably say something like everything must change or some version of that because that to me became the focus of that story, change was everywhere. Now, normally, you would see change represented like this, and it did look like this, but that wasn't the complete picture of change. I mean, change was just kind of pouring from all from all pores of the country. You had the Gray Panthers, which was a senior movement. You had a strong Chicano movement developing. You had Native American strike coming to the forefront. Um, there was just so much going on uh, in emerging gay uh, gay rights activism, and and then we had the envir environmental struggle. So all of that was happening, um, and so um, what I wanted to do was to kind of um, create the feeling of constant str change, struggle, and uncertainty without talking about constant change, struggle, and uncertainty, and in that way, kind of lay a foundation or this vibration of things that can just happen quickly or unexpectedly and have great consequences. So one of the things that would um, have tremendous um, consequence and, and importance for our narrator, because it all must be filtered through her no matter what Rita wants to write, is the, 
is the um, is the uh, the very strong women's liberation movement. Now, at the beginning, um, I, uh, I apologize if I give any spoilers away. Um, yeah, it's not so much. So, um, at the at the airport when the girls have just returned, Delphine is uh, Delphine's attention is drifting away. She sees these college girls. They're in their Columbia University um, uh, t-shirts, and they're getting ready to get into their Chevy. And they're going, and they're driving away. And there's the now uh, button uh, or sticker on the car, um, and she doesn't really quite know what she's looking at. But it's kind of a signal to the reader that her mind is elsewhere and that eventually this will be a part of her struggle, this women's movement. Um, but making liberation um, uh, relevant to Delphine is not was not necessarily a slam dunk. You know, it was all new to her. Um, she was questioning, you know, could women actually run for office? Would people vote for a woman? What do you think? Um, so, <laughs> um, so, um, one of the things that's so easy to forget is that the page that we're on now in terms of women being very, basically able to do whatever they set their minds to do. Um, you know, we weren't on that page um, 40 years ago, 45 years ago, we weren't on that page. Struggle had to come, and without struggle, we don't get to appreciate the change. So I have to make it new for Delphine so that the reader can kind of talk her through it. So in that way, it's kind of new to them, but they also know that, hey, no, Women can do this, and so they and so they become her friend, and they talk her through um, through the movement. Um, now, it's not a it's not a um, an accident that Pa brings in a woman uh, into the household who is radically different <laughs> from the uh, from the matriarch of the clan, um, because change must happen. It must happen in the household, and it must be personal for it to be real. And so all of those changes, all of those things, will have consequences for the family. Now, while all of this is happening, the roles for women are um, is changing, um, you know, um, well, they're still girls, right? Their lives are still going on. We talked about how, um, how you know, um, uh, even while there's these great, while these great issues and conflicts going on, kids are still kids. You know, they're still growing. They're still developing. You know, we're we're dealing with the hormonal um, issues as well as um, uh, as as well as mental issues, and so. You have to have, you have to have what is at the heart of the character. The character's true desire is to cry over a boy band. <laughs> now, it might seem, it, it seems kind of childish um, or, or uh, this, um, but this preteen desire um, actually does co coexist with the, with the tension and changes in the household because it helps to kind of spark what will forever change the household. Um, so it, it's, it's just a kind of a way to use something that is just on the face of it just relatable to teens um, to, or to the child reader, but then when you step back and take a look at it, you can see the larger role that it plays. So you don't really have to, um, you don't really have to talk down to kids in order to bring something in there to, um, um, to kind of move the plot and to spark larger um, discussions. They can be Begin to see a lot of all of these, um, all of these relationships themselves. They come up with it themselves. Um, 
this was actually an album that I once owned. But um, during this time, the, uh, you know, I was writing about a period in which there was um, decay. You know, we were facing a lot of urban decay, um, and um, and families were, uh, you know, families were moving away, and families were struggling to stay where they were. Um, neighborhoods were changing. The rate, the the ratio of men um, in in the community were was being offset by the Vietnam War that was having a very big impact. Impact in um, in this particular neighborhood, in many such neighborhoods, and so um, one of the things that I'm kind of proud of, but I'm, but it also gives me um, you know some sadness, is that when you when I kind of step back and look at PSV 11, I also see kind of um, a trail or um, of of what happened then and where we are now. Um, and, and so in, in that regard, you know, I think that um, maybe I'm giving um, someone um, on whatever level you're, you're looking at the book, reading the book, whether, uh, whether you're a child or whether you're doing a, um, doing a research paper, whatever, um, some kind of um, grist to kind of study uh, what is happening in the urban communities and, and just that you can go backwards and trace things. And, um, you know, um, one of the joys of going out into the world is and, and uh, meeting kids who are reading your book is that, um, well, they are tackling all of those issues. They're seeing them. You know, sometimes I think, oh, I'm being subtle, Woo! you know, but, um, but they find these things themselves and, um, and, and they attack them wholeheartedly. Um, so, um, so in the final leg of the journey, Delphine is worried about the family and that uh, the family is falling apart. Um, and I allow her to express that uh, directly because that is what the story is, the state of the family, the cohesiveness of the family, and that, um, and that the family cohesion uh, will be severely tested. Um, um, and um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but on the road to writing this very family-oriented story, um, I, I um, really delved into just the whole notion of what makes up the American family. Um, and I fell in love with all the pictures that I found. They just tell such great stories of, of travel and, and of crossings. And I think that's what I was interested in most, were the crossings of, of ethnicities, of peoples, whether it was from brutality or by, uh, by choice or um, necessity or what have you. Um, but. I found um, I found this real. I found a lot of information on uh, Native Americans uh, who also um, who also incorpor incorporated African Americans into their society, and so I I um, I just stayed on websites of the freedmen um, and and their journey, and that they also made the journey of the Trail of Tears along with their host Native American families and some intermarried and some stayed in the tribe but separately um, as um, as as a um, like Creek freedmen or um, Cho um, Choctaw freedmen or um, Cherokee freedmen and so forth and so on. Um, there's a lot of books, a lot of material on this. And what makes this very, um, very interesting is that everybody has ownership of the story. On one side, you have um, you will have the Native American um, a, a Native American um, interest in story from the point of you know from what from what side are you telling the story? We're talking about, about appropriation. Um, are these facts right? Um, are is um, are we calling 
um, the tribes and people and, and uh, um, cultural references as we would like them. But yet on the other side, you have the freedmen side of the story and how they see things and how they portray themselves. And so it, so at some point, the artist has to, the artist and the, and the author as an authority has to make the decision about whose story this is. So when I began to look at um, the family history, the family history that I was telling, um, you know, I, I could see um, where all of the different um, uh, branches, where they come together, uh, where they meet, and, um, and um, okay, so I don't know if you can read my scrap, my scroll, but um, the uh, so this is the story of the uh, of the African ancestor um, uh, who came into the Creek tribe um, um, and had an uh, and had a Creek wife. By the end of the story, I did name her. I did find this um, the uh, the name the Creek name that actually went along with the story, the narrative story um, of their meeting. Um, and then amongst them, they had eleven children. And of those eleven children, uh, Slim Jim Trotter would be uh, the girl's great um, uh, the, his uh, great great grandfather. Um, and then Slim Jim Trotter um, had, well, well, I'm going to say <laughs> that there is, um, in, my, in my family, in my own family, we talk about family curses a lot. I don't know if anybody else talks about this, but things that repeat themselves from generation to generation to generation. And I'm going to say that there is a particular pattern going on, on, on here, a particular pattern going on in all three branches of the family. There is a continual family curse, and uh, because I don't want to um, um, uh, give away any spoilers or anything, I think that's something for you, for you all to find, but it's, something that just goes on and on and on in family. Um, and so that, you know, that's part of making the story real and bringing it be, um, and taking it beyond just the research, but really getting to know where my characters come from and whose traits do they share, um, and what were the circumstances that brought the people to where they are now. And so you have characters who loom largely in the background, and we hear about them in story, and then we have characters who, um, who are present in story, we get to hear their voices, um, and then we get to see how they are family to Delphine, Vanetta, and Fern. Um, and, um, oh, okay, so, um, but there, there's also, there's also uh, in that, um, in that creating family and family traits, um, you know, there's some things that I have to say to myself, okay, well, hmm, um, if, if the reader does know the characters in a certain way, then their relationship to the people that I'm going to introduce them to has to kind of, it has to fit, it has to all marry well. So, you know, that, that, that becomes the part where the creating the characters are a lot of fun. Now, people tend to ask me, you know, um, are the character which part which part of the characters are you you know um, that's that is showy and crowy Vanetta you know that's so Rita Williams Garcia um, but um, is, is that is that or is she Fern or is she Delphine um, well I think that there are little bits of drops um, that I can pull from in order to create these characters but I hate to say it that. Um, for the most part, uh, uh, um, the characters kind of work out in a matrix, and let me explain what I mean. So, Fern, lovely Fern, Fern, our poet, um, 
Fern, um, <laughs> so Fern has an ally in Ma Charles. Ma Charles has an antagonist in Miss Trotter. Um, Miss Trotter has an ally in Vanetta. Vanetta has an antagonist in Fern. So it all kinds of works out. So our, our elder allies kind of align and our sister um, allies and antagonists align. Um, and so for me, as much as I love my characters and I put a lot into creating them, they all have to make sense to me, I'm sorry, mathematically. So there, there are uh, certain aspects of family that that's often very hard to deal with. Family is not easy, um, you know. But it's kind of interesting. So even something very repugnant can be very hard to, uh, you know, very hard to to um, to wrestle with. But still, you know, still we wrestle. Um, imagine you're African American. And this is your kinsman. And the car says, Southern whites are the Negro's best friend, but no integration. Imagine that you, as the artist and the author, the authority, must understand this point of view. Must, in a sense, love and not like this character. So, um, so you, you know, you push yourselves beyond the beyond what you would like to do. Just like I wanted to just have, um, uh, just like I wanted to really uh, bring in all of the women of the Black Panther movement into the story, I had to say, but the story belongs to the people. I can sh I can create. I can shape a womanist sensibility, but. I have to let the story be the story. The same things apply here. Um, so in order to tell myself, in order to get through, um, uh, get through all of the different um, string, uh, threads of the story and all the webs and all the mathematical problems and all the matrixes, matrices uh, that I might create in order to uh, push myself through the story, I get up every morning and I repeat to myself, Everything goes back to the cow. It must go back to the cow. Okay, so there are no spoilers here, but everything, everything must go back to the cow. Um, um, so before before I leave, um, these are words from uh, these are words from Elizabeth Edwards. Um, she stood in the storm, and when the wind did not blow her way, she adjusts her sails. Um, they are they are beautiful words, and and I think about that uh, um, as I say goodbye to my characters um, because they all stand kind of in the in crossroads, in storms. And uh, the, uh, the more, even the most intractable characters must feel the wind blow, must change, must change for survival of self, but change also for the, um, for the survival and, uh, of, of the family. So without, um, um, so it's, it's very hard to say goodbye to these characters who I've grown to love and to feel at home with and to know their terrain. Um, but you have to always be open to what's next on the horizon. Thank you.